Welcome back. Now to young and industrious that seems to become, is becoming very popular. In 2013, a Bachelor of Arts in Business and Information Technology student decided to venture into the suit making business as an income generating side hustle. Upon graduation, Ashok Sani secured employment but opted to quit after his third salary. Reason? to focus full-time on his suit-making venture. Fast forward nine years and Ashok Sani Taylor the Limited boasts of 15 employees and our reporter Yusuf Farah spent an afternoon with the man behind the company and filed the following report for this week's episode of Young and Industrious. Nairobi's Garden Chambers Building houses the Ashok Sani Taylor Limited Company. Here, we meet the man behind the name and business Ashok Sani in his element attending to a client. <laughs> After salutations, the head creative director walks me through the history that led to the inception of the company. Ashok Sani Taylor Limited started in 2013. Basically, the first time I started was uh, I, I went to a tailor, got ordered a suit because I like suits a lot. So the first tailor that I ordered a suit from never delivered. So I said, how hard can it be to make one suit for yourself? So that's where I started from. When people started to like it, I saw an opportunity where I can start a business from it. The first time we had registered as a business firm, a business name. Then in 2017 we decided because I got new partners, people who had invested now in the business. So I had to register a business as a limited company. We then take into the cutting and stitches theater where fabrics are converted into garments. Tailors here are immersed in their art. Eyes on the sewing machines, their biggest weapon, focus. Sunny tells me what happens here. People usually come already knowing roughly what they want. So it's, it's you now tuning what they want to make it something very, very good. Fabric is very key. A suit is fabric and tailoring. So after choosing fabric, I take your measurements. After taking your measurements, you put on a deposit for confirmation of the order, then we start making. If it's made to measure, we just do take the measurements, cut the fabric cloth on, on, on the table according to the measurements. If it's bespoke, it's a canvas cut. So we have a canvas. We have a canvas that we cut your measurement from. That's why the, when, we, when we cut the measurements, those are the measurements that we'll put, the canvas will be put on the fabric to cut the whole, the whole suit. For made to measure, we use the standard measurements that we've taken, cut the fabric, then after cutting, they start stitching. After stitching, we do the fitting. Once a client is satisfied after the fitting process, the tailors get back to the finishing and the suit is ready for picking and dressing up. Suit prices vary depending on the fabric and the occasion they are selected for. So what is mostly locally available here is polyester. Polyester and polywool. Polywool is a mixture of polyester and wool. So the minimum suit that we have is 15,000, which is polyester. Then polywool, which is a mixture of polyester and wool, is what we do, a second suit, which is 25,000. Then we have wools. Wools are suits that basically are the best fabrics in the world. So we have wool suiting, wool suiting fabric ranging from Super 100 to Super 200. But here in Kenya, we can only sell Super 100 to Super 160 because of the quality of our water, which is lather water, which is very heavy. So if you do beyond Super 180, the, the fabric shrinks. Super 100 will cost you between 50,000 to 60,000, depending on, on, on the wool itself. Because usually sometimes wool can be mixed with other fabrics. So depending on the content of the wool, we can sell it between 50 to 60,000. Then to point 20 will be around 70, 80,000, going up to point 60, which is 200,000. The business that started off as a side hustle with no permanent tailors now has over 15 employees working and others training in different stations. The hard work translates into an average monthly revenue of up to 2.5 million, and thanks to this occupation, they are able to manage their livelihoods and that of their families. It's been a complete turn for me, especially, you know, the transition because I came from the corporate world and now I came into, you know, self-employment. And I would say that 
I depend on this fully, entirely, you know, my, my, my family, because I have a family. I came here last year, August, for my internship. I had applied it and I was accepted, so I was here for a month. Then after that month, I went back to school. I was looking forward to work with him. So when I got that opportunity, I accepted it. And the beginning of this year, I came through as a tailor right now. And I'm enjoying this day. I've been making a living with what I love. Ashok Sunny Tailor Limited now boasts of a clientele that has seen him grow over the years. The clients have, since the inception of the company, stuck with him as their preferred go-to designer for suits for different functions. Every entrepreneur going about his business is confronted by numerous challenges. This company is no different. How can we get into retailing? How do we do retailing in Kenya? How can I, Ashok, sell my brand for you to buy off the shelf? We maintain our made-to-measure and bespoke, then we go to retail. How do we do retail? What kind of products can we retail? Do we have a distribution channel? How do I sell these products out there? Who's going to shelf these products for me in the, in the stores? In the face of these challenges, Sonny can't see himself doing any other job. The designer even says the challenges and critics of his business are the very reason he wakes up each day to better himself and his art. We're building a brand that will last longer than me myself. We're building a brand that my children and grandchildren can benefit from it. Ashok tells me style is a way of introducing yourself without saying who you are and true to this philosophy. The designers promise to take sartorial excellence across the borders and in this way build the brand to become a household name. Yusuf Far reporting for KBC Features from Nairobi.